Well, we knew that Scooby-Doo's book Endgame was going to be an absolute disaster, but folks, we couldn't have even anticipated just how messy it is. In the Dutch edition of Omid Scobie's new book Endgame, the names of the two members of the royal family who Megan claims were racist towards an unborn Archie have been revealed. And Scabies is worried that he might be sued, so he is freaking out. He's trying to get the copies of the book halted. He's trying to get them off the shelves. But we're sure this was no accident. Page 6 reports, Xander Publishers confirmed Tuesday that it received a request from the U.S. to abruptly halt sales on Omid Scobie's bombshell biography Endgame inside the royal family and the monarchy's fight for survival in Holland. A spokesperson for Xander told the Daily Mail, I can't talk about the details. We have, however, received a request to put the title on hold, and that is what we have done. We are awaiting further instructions. I do not know how long this will be. Alright, so in the final edition of Endgame, which talks about the state of the British monarchy after Queen Elizabeth passed away in September of 2022, Scabies claimed that he didn't name the member of the royal family who allegedly questioned how dark artificial skin was going to be before he was born. But in the Dutch edition, he did name the royal. And guess who it was? King Charles. Thanks to Rick Evers on X, formerly known as Twitter, we've got the whole excerpt. I sure cannot read Dutch, so I thank Rick Evers for translating the whole portion for us. So, it reads, During their conversation with Oprah, both Harry and Meghan declined to say who was present at that conversation. A representative for the couple only wanted to say that it was not the Queen or Prince Philip. I think that will be very damaging to them, Meghan said. But, in those private letters, an identity was revealed and confirmed. Charles. The king, sources say, wanted to respond to make clear to Meghan that there was no ill will or bias when he spoke about his future grandson. He wanted to clarify something he felt was very important, says a royal insider. Now, this is coming from page 128 of Omid Scobie's book Endgame. Of course, it's the Dutch copy, but it was translated into English from Dutch. Daily Mail was the first outlet to pick up the story, but they redacted the mail because I guess a lot of people are worried right now about how legal it might be to reveal the names. It sounds like Scooby-Doo is panicking right now because he's afraid he could be sued. The publisher should also be worried, and I guess the Daily Mail just didn't want to risk it, so that's why they chose not to publish the name. But there you go, folks. There it is. The great thing about the internet sometimes is that if you want to find out some information, if you just dig long enough, you can certainly come across it. Now recently, you might remember we talked about that in Scooby-Doo's book, he claims there was a second royal racist, that it wasn't only one person. Well, now folks, we've got the name of that person too. According to, again, Rick Evers, I mean, I thank him so much for the wonderful work he's doing on this, he has posted another excerpt from the book, quote, Even after Megan and Charles by letter discussed about probable unconscious bias within the family, after it was revealed that the King and Princess of Wales took part in such conversations about Archie, Kate has avoided discussing the subject with her sister-in-law. Okay, so before we talk about how Scooby-Doo is handling this whole mess, let's talk about the likelihood that any of this really happened. So with Charles, all right, sure, I can believe it. I mean, people of that generation, my generation to be fair, we often will say things that younger people claim are insensitive about skin color and looks and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure that if Charles really did say something, he wasn't trying to be racist. In fact, I don't think he was being racist at all. I believe he was just curious about what Arch Official might turn out to look like. He was assuming that Megan really was pregnant and that Harry really was the father, and I understand, it's just normal curiosity. This is a very normal discussion that happens in families. So personally, I can believe that maybe Charles said something that Megan took offense to. Of course, Megan was always on the lookout for something to be offended by, but that's neither here nor there. But okay, let's talk about the second member of the family, Catherine, who supposedly made some type of racist comment about an unborn Archie. I don't believe it for one second. Let's be clear about what is going on here. Megan hates Catherine with a passion, and she will do absolutely anything to smear Catherine. I mean, Scooby-Doo's book attacks Catherine in so many different ways. It sounds like about half the book is dedicated to trying to make Catherine look bad. 
Is there any chance, though, that Scooby-Doo and Megan are going to succeed in their mission? Absolutely not. We already know who Catherine is, thanks to her good work that she does on behalf of the monarchy, and thanks to the fact that she's a lovely person all around. The honest truth is that it doesn't matter what she says, it doesn't matter how hard she tries, Megan cannot damage Catherine's reputation. And I think that is what bothers her more than anything else. The fact that Catherine is going to still be popular at the end of the day, and Megan is still going to be unpopular. What I cannot wait to see is what is going to be the fallout from this error, as Scabies put it. I mean, let's remember, he bragged about knowing the names of these mysterious royal races, so it serves him right that they got revealed. And again, I find it hard to believe that this was an accident. But anyway, in an interview with Good Morning, Scooby-Doo said, I do know who made the comments about Archie's skin color. The names were mentioned in letters between Megan and Charles that were exchanged sometime after the Oprah interview. We know from sources that Charles was horrified that that's how Megan felt. Those conversations were, and that he wanted to, sort of as a representative for the family, have that conversation with her. And it is why I personally think they have been able to move forward with some kind of line of communication afterwards, though they may not see eye to eye on it. Now, Scooby-Doo has also said that he's not going to name who the person is because he's afraid he's going to be sued. Well, I hope he is sued. I hope the royal family sues him for all he's worth. He doesn't want to face them in court. He's scared, as he should be. And as for the Montecito Moaners, Harry and Megan, well, I think they are officially screwed. It sounds like this royal racist was the last blackmail card they had on the royal family. And now Scooby-Doo has taken it away from them. So what are they going to use now to blackmail the royal family with? They've got nothing. Is this going to mean that they're going to shut up finally? Well, probably not. But it could mean that things are going to change in this relationship between Harry and Megan and the rest of the family. At this point, Harry and Megan have no power. It's not like they had a lot of power before, but maybe the royal family really was worried that if people thought Catherine and Charles said racist remarks about an unborn Archie, that that would damage the royal family. Now, at this point, I don't think they have anything to worry about. Harry and Meghan have told so many lies, and Scooby-Doo has as well. They're simply not credible people at this point. The story that somehow the Dutch publishers added the names to the book also doesn't make a bit of sense. I mean, they would have just translated the book. They wouldn't have added any names. And last time I checked, names are not translated anyway. If Scooby-Doo had never written King Charles in the book, how could they have put that in there? They couldn't have. So him trying to claim that this was an error is just ridiculous. Right now, they're frantically trying to pull all the copies from the shelves, but I'm afraid it's too late. There are already at least a few copies circulating, and it's not like people are going to keep the content secret. Now, if the rest of the book were full of facts and 100% truthful, then maybe it wouldn't be that big of a problem. But unfortunately for Scooby-Doo, the book is already being criticized for its long list of discrepancies. Another completely BS claim that is made in the book is that Princess Diana died in a car crash in Paris in 1997 because, according to The Sun, her driver was blinded by a major white flash from a chasing photographer's camera. The book claims that Diana's driver, Henri Paul, was blinded by a major white flash from a paparazzi photographer on an overtaking motorbike. Now, according to The Sun, this theory was a key part of Mohammed Fayyid's conspiracy claims that Diana and his son Dodi were murdered as part of an establishment plot ordered by Prince Philip. But French authorities, as well as former Met Police Chief Lord Stevens, have absolutely dismissed the suggestion. It didn't happen like that. And I understand that Mohammed was a grieving father. He wanted an explanation for his son's tragic death. But that accident has been thoroughly investigated, and it truly was an accident. The driver was drunk. Diana wasn't wearing her seatbelt, and they were driving way too fast through that tunnel. Was it a tragic accident? Absolutely. But still, the conspiracy theories need to stop. Over the next few episodes, I'm going to go into more detail about some of the falsehoods contained in this ridiculous book. And of course, we will keep you updated as to any backlash the Scooby-Doo faces. It's going to be an exciting few days, so please stay tuned. And you, what do you think about this mess? Please let me know your opinion below in the comment section. If you enjoyed our video today, don't hesitate to share it with any of your friends and family who would like it too. And before you go, please click the subscribe button so that you don't miss a single update from our team. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a great day, and I'll be back to see you in the next videos.